well it's Thursday and today's video is going to be a little art lesson on how to draw a snowdrop so I really hope that you enjoy it and feel free to decorate the back background of it all and have a great art lesson. Okay, so for the warm up today, we're going to do some curved lines and some leaves because we've got a stalk today. So I want you to practice just doing a few curves. Look, look how I'm holding my pencil really, really loosely. And I want you to try practicing those lovely, loose, sketchy lines. And the other thing is just some leaves. So just take a line up and join it. Now you can fill a page with leaves. And in fact, it would make lovely designs. And when you look at what the work of some designers, people like William Morris, they just filled a page with lovely leaves. So that is our warm up today. A few curvy lines and some leaves and then chuck it away because it's just a piece of paper. And we'll start with our snowdrop. So we're going to do a snowdrop today. We're going to start with this little shape here. This is the top bit of the snowdrop. So you can see I'm doing a curve and then a straight line. You see that shape? And then we're gonna put in the first petal. Let's take it down. We want that to be quite a bit bigger, maybe two, more than two, twice as big as that top bit there. And just curve that down for the first petal. And then we're gonna take it up. Now, one of the things about the the snowdrop is it's a little hook, so I want you to come up like that and then a curve. Can you see how much it curves down? Don't go to the bottom of the paper because we're going to put a little bit of ground in there. You'll see how we're going to do that later. So these three shapes here, we've just got that shape, then the petal, and then don't forget the hook up and come down. Okay, to get this looking like a proper snowdrop, we're going to come up from here. And we're going to go out to there and we'll take a line coming out a little bit at the edge there. You might need to take it out slightly further and just bring it round in a lovely gentle curve, keeping your marks very light. Then we're going to do the same at the other side. It doesn't have to be symmetrical because flowers often aren't. We'll take it round to a nice curve. So that's our three petals we've got there. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the stem, we're going to make it slightly bigger. Can you see? Not much. If you ever look at a snowdrop, they're very delicate, very, very delicate, the, um, the stems on them. So we're going to keep that really thin all the way down to about there. And now we're going to take out the first leaf. Remember how we did that in our practice, lovely sweeping lines. So go not halfway down, but more than halfway up here like that. Think about the gap you're leaving here. We'll get that gap there and we're going to sweep our leaf right up to there. And then the same on the top. Lovely sweeping leaf. They're quite thin leaves, snowdrops. Okay, so that's the next stage. Two petals. Widen your stem just slightly, keep it nice and slim, and then take a nice leaf up. Okay, we're gonna put the ground in here. This is actually gonna be snow. So rather than a straight line, just to make it more interesting, just curve your line a little. Okay, like that. And then we're gonna finish this with two leaves. We don't want the leaf touching. So start up about there. The same on the other side and come to there. Now with this one, just so that we've got an interesting picture, let's take it up quite a bit higher and we'll go. I'm going to have to turn the paper a bit here just because that's the way I draw on that second leaf there. So don't worry if you need to turn the paper. Okay, so that says we've got two leaves and a flower and a bit of snow. Now, we're going to come on, I'm going to come on and do some painting and I'm going to show you a really interesting painting technique called wax resist. So even if you've not got any paints and you're going to do this in pens or in crayons or in pencils, have a little watch anyway, because it's quite nice to watch it, uh, to watch the way the magic works with the paint. 
but if you've not got paints just color it in use your pencil choose whatever you've got and make sure you send them to us on our facebook page little art school scotland because we just love seeing them so much and i can't wait to see what you've drawn Okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put a watercolour wash in the background and then I'm going to do the leaves with and the with some, my watercolour pencils. So that's what I'm going to use. But this is what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with something called wax resist. What that means is if I put wax marks down on the paper, you can see all I've got is a candle here. If I just put some wax marks on the paper, when I paint over them, they won't show. So I will show you on this test a bit. You can't see them. Well, I know I'm putting in some little bits of snow. Now, usually at the art school, we would just use a birthday cake candle, but can't find any white ones at home at the moment, and I can't get out to the shops. So we've only got the red ones. Now, I wouldn't use a coloured one because, can you see, it's like a crayon, and it's going to give me pink, and we don't want that. We want white. So any kind of white candle, or even a white crayon, if you've got it, that you can get hold of. And what I want you to do is just all over here, Put some little dots that's what I'm doing they're going to be like snowdrops as if it's snowing and it's called wax resist because what I'm actually doing is putting a bit of wax down on the paper and when the paint goes over the top it resists it so that's my snowdrop my little drops of snow all around I'm not doing anything on the flower I'm going to paint around there but what I am doing here is putting as if there's snow piled up on the ground as well just around those marks so I'm going to use a different colour on the ground. Okay, and then we're going to mix our wash. So I want to go for a lovely kind of purpley wash behind. And to create that, I'm going to mix two purples, a reddish purple and a blue purple. So purple a, is a secondary colour, which means you mix two primaries, a red and a blue, and you're going to get a purple. So I'm going to go for this blue here, which is a nice ultramarine, and I will just... I want it to be quite dark so that my um, snow really shows up. If it's too pale, the snow won't show up. So I'm going to put lots of blue in that one. And I'm going to put a little bit of blue in this one. Just a bit. There we go, like that. And then, making sure that my brush is very clean, I'm going to go for a red. I want to put a bit of red in that one. You see, I'm just gathering the paint on my brush there. So that's a very bluey purple. You see that? And then this one, I want to make it a very reddy purple. So I'm going to go for lots more red now. So remember, your blue is your primary and your red, and your purple is your secondary. What we're actually doing, this is super fancy, we're making tertiary colours because we've gone for a bluey purple and a reddy purple. But Right, what I'm going to do, remember we've do, we did this with the balloons. We're going to put a magic force field of water just around the flower here because I don't want anything, any paint going on our lovely flower. So I'll just take a bit of water, just water, nothing else, and go around my flower and my stem. It's just going to make it a bit easier when I start putting my paint on. And I don't want to go over the bottom bit either. I'm going to make that a slightly different colour. Can you see I've gone, it's quite difficult to see this, I know you might be able to see the light shining slightly off the water, but there's no paint on here. But here's the magic now. This is the magic when we go in and we put our paint on. So I'm going to start with some of my blue. Look, can you see that the snow drops, the, the drops of snow rather than the drops of flower, that's a bit getting a bit confusing. Can you see how they're not coming up? Look at those, those spots there. Okay, I'm going to put in bits of that purple and then I'm going to go here. I'm going to go in for my ready purple now. Just makes it a little bit more interesting, but it's not, it's not going to go past the force field. It's not going to go past, I'm painting this flat, but what I will do is move it around a little bit. I don't want it going over the edge there. But just, can you see having those two purples rather than one solid block of purple? It makes it look a little bit more sophisticated, doesn't it? And we all love a bit of sophisticated painting. So finishing with that one there. 
little drop bit of red in there as well. It's quite nice when you just drop the water into each other and just let it mix. So you're letting it do it in a really, that's the joy of watercolour. You can't really control it. You're not entirely sure what it's going to do. So I'm going to drop a bit more in there as well. So I really am just dropping it in. Okay, and now I'm going to let that dry. There's a lot of water on that. You can see there's a lot of water pooled on that. So it's going to take quite a while to dry. Um, so I'm going to leave it for five minutes to dry. But can you see whether when it's dry, you'll really see how the little drops of snow have come up. I'll just put a bit more paint there and then we'll move on to the next bit. OK, so I'm going to use three watercolour pencils here and I've let it dry. It's to, I've let it dry for quite a while. And I'm going to start with my darker green here. I'm going to use two greens. I'm going to use just one is absolutely fine if you've only got one, but I'm going to go right around the edge of this. You can see I'm pressing quite hard. It's very different from the way that I draw, which is super light and sketchy. This time I'm actually going in a bit harder because I really want to get that dark green showing up. And I'm going to do that for all three leaves. So we'll fast forward that bit. Okay, and then I'm going to take my brush. I'll probably use a slightly thinner one than I did, sorry, leaning over, for my background wash because I want to keep it quite neat. And I'm going to start off here, take my brush, just gently turn this to paint. But you can see it's a lovely, vibrant green. And we'll do the same here. It's a balance between too much and too little water. But you do want to go over it until you can't really see those pen marks, pencil marks anymore, until it becomes, so you've really turned the pigment into paint. So that's our dark green elements. And now I want to do these light green ones here. And with this, I'm gonna do the same as I did earlier. So really pop quite a bit of pigment on there and then coming around probably should have done this first it doesn't really matter what order you do this bits in but i want that kind of very can you see how that's such a lovely sort of spring green isn't it coming around and again nice thin brush not much paint here, not much water here to turn this one. I'm going to take my brush around. Now, just a few things to do to finish this one off. Okay, so we're just going to take that down. I want to go around these, that little light line in the middle, a light line there. Now, we're not going to turn all this to paint. We want to do this so subtly because it's a snowdrop, remember? It's supposed to be white, so, but we just want, as if it's, as if there's a shadow, just a tiny shadow. Oh, this is so subtle, really sophisticated painting, everybody, if you're painting along with me. There's our snowdrop, and I want in the bottom to do the same, as if there's a couple of shadows of the sky and the snow. So I'm just going to go with my brush. I might even add a touch of that purple in there too. Just a little bit. And there is our snow drop, all finished. Now we chose Snowdrop today for lots of different reasons, but one of the reasons was because the Snowdrop's a really beautiful flower, which when you, in the dark days of January and you feel like spring is never gonna come, the Snowdrop appears. So that's why I think it's a lovely, picture and I think it'd be a really really nice one to share on FaceTime with any relatives that might be on their own at home and or just tell them to do it or you could FaceTime and do it together or show them your picture or maybe even send them your picture so I really hope that they love the snowdrop as much as you did and I'm going to see you tomorrow tomorrow's Friday tomorrow's special treat day so we're going to have a laugh tomorrow because even if you're not a Frozen fan everybody loves the funny snowman so we will see you tomorrow for all Olaf. Oh,